places have been spared, microplastic pollution invading our oceans and now the soil. Could it also enter the food chain? Scientists in the Netherlands are beginning to uncover the tip of the iceberg, so far with more open questions than answers. We are a small family farm. We grow asparagus and we have uh, 21 tons asparagus. That's what we grow per year. It is a delicate crop. In springtime, we make little like hills, we call them beds. The little hill we cover up with uh, mulch film. There's a couple of reasons why we cover it up. First of all, to keep the asparagus in the dark. You need that so the uh, asparagus stays white. As soon as the asparagus comes into the sunlight, uh, he turns like a little bit of um, uh, purple, pink. And then at the end, he, he turns out green. He makes chlorophyll and he uh, starts to grow green. One side of the mulch film is white and the other side is black. So depending on the weather, we turn up the white side to cool the mountain a little bit or the black side up to warm the mountain a little bit. The mulch film is made out of plastic. We can use it five, six, seven years. We use it as long as possible and then we recycle it. It would be hard to do it without plastic film. Then you have to be harvesting like twice a day. So you need more people to, uh, to do the labor. The asparagus growth started after the war. So that will be like 45. Then they don't have mulch cover-ups and they would harvest twice a day, but they would harvest far less than we do nowadays. To my knowledge, there's no alternative right now. If there would be a good alternative with the same results, then that would be okay. We would be happy to, um, to use that. Plastics have infiltrated every aspect of our lives, including the way our food is grown. They're used extensively in agriculture, for greenhouses or mulch film, but also as coatings on fertilizers, pesticides and seeds. Plastics have helped increase crop yields, but at a steep environmental cost, as they degrade and break down into tiny fragments of microplastic. And that's not all. Sewage sludge, the byproduct left behind after wastewater is cleaned, is also commonly used as fertilizer and sprayed onto farmland. Here's the hitch. It contains high concentrations of microplastic particles. According to recent estimates, between one and six million tons of microplastic can now be found in agricultural soil, although the impact of such levels is not yet fully understood. European farmland could in fact be the largest global reservoir of microplastics, with concentrations in the soil even exceeding those found in the ocean. I'm working for the project uh, Minagris. It's a European project and we aim at understanding the plastic contamination in agriculture. Every time when we start a study about plastic contamination, we don't ask ourselves, will we find plastic? We ask ourselves more, how much will we find? You have diversity of, uh, of polymers, but also one plastic is rarely composed of only uh, one polymer. It's composed of uh, additives, and all these additives, they are potential uh, contaminants. And once the plastic is in the soil, these uh, additives, they can leak from the plastic. The problem of plastic in soil is that it won't stay in the soil. It uh, can go into the water in aquatic ecosystems. 
we know that also most of the plastic that we find in water, they come from terrestrial activities. Measuring the plastic content in, is uh, one part, and then understanding what are the effects uh, of this plastic is uh, another question. What are the possible effects this plastic will uh, have in the soil, on the plant, but also on the soil organisms like uh, earthworms? Earthworms, they are emblematic organisms uh, in the soil. They help to mineralize the organic matter. They create the porosity in the soil. So they have very important functions. And at the same time, they will be in direct contact with the microplastic uh, in the soil. So we need to understand uh, if this can affect their activity, their, their health, and their reproducibility. We are starting the experiments. We know that for very high concentration, there will be negative effects but at the concentration we find in the field, it's uh, more difficult to answer. At the moment, we don't know so many open questions that we will try to answer to see what's happening in real conditions. Here we study the impacts of uh, microplastics on plants what is in the soil and what finally ends up in the uh, food of uh, humans. And the plants we choose for uh, research is, uh, for instance, lettuce or it can be wheat. The root of the plant is forming side roots and when that happens there is a small gap. And that is where the microplastics enter then they are easily transported up to the uh, above ground parts, away from the roots, and that is when they end up in the lettuce that you eat every day. So what we do is that we take a soil and then we add uh, microplastics and then we uh, examine how many plastic particles are taken up by the lettuce. The green leaves, we feed them to snails. Then we examine uh, what will be the amount of particles that end up in the snails. Most of the microplastics will simply stay in the root. Only like one-tenth of a percent of the microplastics are actually accumulated in the above ground parts. And what we see is that there is no impact at all. Uh, the plastics accumulate a little bit in the snails, but they have no effects on the snails themselves. What we have been investigating is indeed uh, the impacts of uh, plastics on uh, growth and germination of uh, seeds and of plants. Uh, what we see is that, for instance, wheat plants, they have uh, less impacts when exposed to um, uh, microplastics as compared to lettuce plants. So in the one case, we see like um, uh, reduced germination by f in between 5 and 20 percent. And in the other case, the plants are not harmed by the presence of the microplastics. How bad is that for, for me or for humans in general? Basically, do we get sick? Are we affected by the microplastics in uh, our food? The answer is, uh, well, rather disappointing, but we don't know. We do not know how dangerous plastics are for human beings. So we do know that they will accumulate in our body, but there is no uh, research done on how the toxicity is of microplastics for humans after eating microplastics. So this is really an, a research area that is still under development. Replacing mulch film will be a tough sell. Plastic is cheap and there are concerns that other options could reduce yields. Our next stop is in France's Burgundy region, where farmers are experimenting with a plant-based alternative, so far with positive results. On est dans une ferme céréalière convertie en agriculture biologique depuis des décennies et qui a fait le choix de ne pas avoir de plastique dans les sols. Je suis posé sur une toile de chambre, sur une toile végétale qui est produite en Bourgogne. L'utilisation de toiles en chambre permet de, de répondre à l'objectif de, de limiter les, les mauvaises herbes. C'est l'idéal pour tout ce qui est culture en maraîchage, que ce soit les salades, les tomates, tout, les, tous les jardins potagers. 
Euh, nous, le procédé que l'on a, c'est de l'intisser, ça veut dire que c'est de la fibre en vrac qui est mise à plat et bombardée avec de l'eau. Donc les, les, les formations qui sont faites sont très résistantes mécaniquement. Ça nous permet de refaire des toiles végétales pour faire justement des équivalents de bâches plastiques. C'est une matière qui est naturelle et biodégradable, euh, qui va tenir un an, deux ans, deux ans et demi. Ce qui est certain, c'est que euh, les bioplastiques ou les plastiques de façon générale n'ont pas du tout le même impact sur la vie des sols qu'une toile végétale. Les avantages d'une toile végétale, c'est un effet justement euh, buvard et qui va limiter euh, donc le soleil en dessous, donc tout ce fait, il va limiter toutes les, ce qu'on appelle les mauvaises herbes. Ça va retenir l'eau et ça va se dégrader naturellement avec une biodégradation qui va être totale. L'usage des toiles végétales permet de se rendre compte qu'on a des vraies solutions pour remplacer euh, les, les plastiques. Malheureusement, ces techniques vertueuses sont soumises à une loi des marchés. Nous, nos toiles végétales, elles sont en souffrance sur des prix de revient et euh, au prix du baril de pétrole, il faudrait doubler le, le prix du baril de pétrole pour que les toiles végétales soient rentables. Ce qui est évident, c'est quand un agriculteur comprendra qu'il qu empoisonne ses petits-enfants à faire des légumes contaminés, euh, la question se posera plus rapidement. Il n'y a pas que le champ, mais il y a du lin oléagineux, il y a toutes sortes de fibres de l'ortie ou autre qui pourraient servir en toile végétale, comme ce que faisaient les anciens, euh, qui permettra de retrouver une, fer une fertilité et une, une vie du sol avec des fibres naturelles euh, versus un plastique qu'on ne saura jamais éliminer.